Hello everyone. Last Monday we talked about the main story within Falshira, but there's another storyline going on in the zone which I want to talk about today. As described in the title, as well as in the description, there will be spoilers coming. If you don't want any spoilers, then please turn off the video right now. Let's begin, shall we? As we're sent by Yasira to pick up the Tears of Alun, at the temple we encounter Darcy Heathrow, who's also looking for help. Her village is in trouble. They were dead, but they were not dead, they were alive dead. The druids are dealing with the legion and the satyrs attacking the temple, so Darcy asks of us to go to Bradensbrook and speak with Mayor Heathrow. Once we arrive at the town, we can see that Jared Shadowsong is being held at gunpoint. He's not looking for trouble, he's just looking for someone within Blackrock Hold, but the mayor doesn't believe him. The town's inhabitants are former Gilneans who left there years ago because of the Scourge uprising. None of them transform into worgen, so it seems like they avoided the curse altogether, and we could take the villagers down of course, we could save Jared's life, but he'd rather convince them that they can trust us, so we're still on the task of helping them out. The mayor's daughter Penelope has been missing, so we bring her back, we help out Granny Marl was shooting down ravenous birds and collecting some of her crops. Rob Beak has killed Papa Radcliffe, so we collect the beast's head and we take out the Black Rook spirits. With that done, we earn the Major's trust and he tells his people to lower their guns. Jared is now free to continue his mission and apparently he's looking for his sister Mayeth. Ever since she chased Gul'dan at the Vault of the Wardens, her sisters, amongst the Wardens, they've been searching far and wide for her whereabouts. With so few Wardens remaining, Jared volunteered to join the search, and he hopes to find a sign of her within Blackrook Hold. The fortress is well guarded though, so he needs our help to break through. Now to make sense of the rest of the storyline, you'll need to know a little bit about the background. During the War of the Ancients, over 10,000 years ago, the Knight of Resistance was led by Lord Kurtalas Ravencrest, and he was the master of Blackrook Hold, and he did so such a good job at finding the Legion that he became a prime target. Varofen sent one of his assassins to take out Ravencrest, and with his death, the next one in line to lead the Knight of Resistance was Lord Destel Star Eye. Star Eye was an idiot though and quickly died. His passing led to Jared picking up the mantle of leadership, and he successfully led the Resistance, and he even held his ground against Archimond. While Malfurion and several others, they saved the day by reversing the portal and prevent the Sargeras from entering the world. Now, in the portal, it caused the Well of Eternity to implode, this caused the Sundering. Illidan created a new well, which they couldn't appreciate of course, they just fought a war against the Legion because of the last Well of Eternity, so Illidan was imprisoned, while Maiev's shadow song Jared's sister, she volunteered to become his guard. Jared left his people behind. Malfurion resumed his studies of druidism, while Tyrande Whisperwind led their people. Many years later, during Warcraft 3, Tyrande decided that it would be a good idea to let Illidan out of his prison, since she believed that they needed his help against the Legion. Maiev couldn't appreciate that, of course. She did everything in her power to put Illidan back in his cage, but instead, she was the one imprisoned. Now fast forward to the Burning Crusade, where she teams up with Akama and Heroes of the Alliance and the Hordes. Together, they took down the Betrayer, and after that, her long hunt was finally finished. My Eve. how is it even possible? Ah, my long hunt is finally over. Today, justice will be done. She returned home to resume leadership of the Wardens, but in the novel Wolfhart, we found out that time had left some serious scars upon Mayev. Her brother Jared, after millennia of being gone, returned to his people, while Malfurion and Tyrande decided that it would be a good idea to let magic and the Highborn back into their society. Maiev had spent her life guarding Illidan to prevent something like the War of the Ancients to happen again, and now her leaders, the leaders of her people, are welcoming those that abuse magic back into their society. This did not sit well with Maiev. She made plans to execute the Highborn as well as Malfurion, but thanks to Jared, those plans failed. In the end, he he confronted his sister, but he couldn't bring himself to take her life. Mayev, she left the scene, while Jared took up leadership of the Wardens, and that's the last we heard of Mayev until the expansion Legion. Jared did play a role during the Cataclysm, he showed up in the Mount Hygel questing, you might remember him from there, and now he's trying to find his sister after the events in the Vault of the Wardens. Now this is the part where I feel like we're still missing some lore to explain what's going on. There is an Illidan novel coming out this year, which I really hope will fill in the gaps, but this is what we know so far. The Demon Hunter the starting area begins around the time of the Burning Crusade, where Illidan sends his demon hunters to collect the Sargerite Keystone, while the force of Azeroth and Shefra, they're assaulting the Black Temple. The first part ends with 
you collecting the keystone, you return triumphant to the Black Temple to assist Illidan. Yet the details of returning to the temple, those are not implemented yet. All we know is that Illidan will be taken care of and he, together with the Demon Hunters, they're placed by Maiev within the Vault of the Wardens. Now fast forward to the Legion time period, to the current day and time. Now the Burning Legion strikes out again and this time it's Maiev not Saranda, that decides to let the Demon Hunters out because they need their aid against the Legion. Wake up, Demon Hunter. Okay, my F. How are you doing? You got voice acting. The Burning Legion will fall. The vault has fallen to the Burning Legion. It pains me to say, but all is lost, but for one glimmer of hope, you. Believe me when I say I did not want to have to do this. However, it would seem I have no choice. Help me, Demon Hunter, and we'll grant you your freedom. My Take up your weapons. I trust you can still handle a blade. Sharp. I will need your help to stop Gul'dan. Free the other Eladari quickly. Gul'dan could never access this chamber. One of my wardens has betrayed me. I too have felt betrayal by my own kind. What is your report? Die After his well. defeat at the Black Temple, we brought Illidan's lifeless body here to be interred forever within the Vault of the Wardens. However, Gul'dan has found his way through our defenses and is trying to steal Illidan's corpse. Even in death, Illidan's body can be used by the Burning Legion. Gul'dan cannot succeed. Until next time. At last, I meet the Great Betrayer. So he is the key to Azeroth's downfall. The body is cold, but his soul is not done fighting. We have work. The Wardens are coming, with the Illidari in tow. They are desperate. Huh. Poof! And they're gone. <coughs> what is Cordana doing Cordana! there? Cordana! You will answer to the High Council for this! Judge me all you like, sister. But you cannot stop us. You're too late, Warden. This vault will be your tomb. Demon Hunters, you have to survive. Find the one Illidan is still my charge! For whatever reason, Gul'dan and Cordana steal Illidan's corpse, and Maiev quickly goes after them, while the Demon Hunters fight their way through the vault, they meet with Khadgar, and they start their own adventure in Legion. Now this brings us back to Jared and Blackrock Hold, where Gul'dan used his soul magic to separate Illidan's soul from his body. The reason is not yet explained, but this is why the undead rose up and attacked the village, and why the spirits of Ravencrest's clan have come back to life. Gul'dan also found the remains of Lord Ravencrest and the Legion, they remembered his resistance during the War of the Ancients, and they gladly took the opportunity for revenge. They forced Ravencrest's soul back into his body, mesmerized him, forcing him to eternally relive the horrors of the War of the Ancients. Jared stands within the Ravencrest mausoleum and he's discovered what happened to the remains. When you talk to him, you can ask him about what happened between him and Maiev, the events in the novel Wolfheart. Jared says, I know my sister. She'd never commit such crimes unless she was under some foul influence. Even so, rather than investigate fully, I assumed the worst. I've been a poor brother, but there's still time for me to make things right. It seems like they're explaining my F's actions in Wolfheart, executing the Highborn, nearly killing Malfuria, and all of that was apparently caused because she was under some sort of influence. Jared even blames himself for not investigating it further, that he was a poor brother, which seems very weird to me. To me, it made sense for my F to be pissed in the novel, to be pissed at Malfuria and execute the Highborn. Imagine dedicating your life to something, to be tormented, all the events that happened to my F, only to have your leaders decide that it's perfectly fine to bring magic back and possibly cause another War of the Ancients. I guess they had to give some sort of reason for Maiev to be back on our side, but hopefully, but perhaps the novel Illidan and the event still not implemented, they are going to give a better explanation. I really hope so, but let's get back to the story. After explaining who Ravencrest is, we're put on the task of taking care of some of the prison officers, as well as tracking down Maiev by checking out the prison cages, the forge and the guard tower. Jared will check the upper ramparts and meet us on the other side of the keep, now the cages, they contain the corpse of a Braden's Book villager, but no sign of Mayev. In a guard tower, we find Star Eyes orders, which says that, despite our attempts to extract information, the warden remains stubbornly resistant, and at the forge, we find Mayev's weapon. It's clear that Mayev is here, and they've taken her into the cells beneath Blackrook Hold, so we collect the key from Araxis, and we make our way inside. 
Down below, we find Arduin Soulblade, who's breathing his final breath as he explains that he and his fellow demon hunters, they were taken by surprise while scouting in Azuna. He does not have long for this world, so he asks of us to help out his friends to save them from their prisons, but it turns out to be a little bit more difficult than expected. Cassil Nightthorn has been tortured to death, Sirius Eppenwing succumbs to the fell energy, so we have to put him down, it's only Asha Raven's song that we can actually save. She explains that we're on the trail of a dreadlord named Belnazar, or Dentaloniax. Since that's the dreadlord that reveals himself, Elf will be Alpha. Either way, they had strong reasons to believe that this demon knew the whereabouts of Illidan's body. Instead, he lured them right into a trap, which is how they ended up in the cells. Now besides the demon hunters, we also find Mayev. Mayev's face is bruised, her lips cracked and her body covered in scars. She looks thin and ragged, but she moves with purpose. For weeks they tried to break me. Pfft, amateurs. I kept my silence, I counted the minutes, measured their steps and listened to the voices beyond my cell. I have been waiting for my chance to escape and to strike back at my captors. Now you bring my armor and my blade! My salvation will be followed by bloodshed. My F smiles. Back you to your duties. my armor and glaive. Thank you, hero. I did not expect salvation from this place. Where is my brother? The Burning Legion will fall! All of your instincts were correct. Go then raise Lord Ravencrest and his ghostly army from beyond the grave. Now they serve the Legion, protecting secrets within the tower. Although Ravencrest commands from above, Lieutenant Desdell Star Eye operates this, the prison. He tormented me these past few moons, but I did not yield. Mayev runs a finger along her curved blade. His life must be ended. Until next time. Little brother, you came for me. Even after I tried to... Never mind that, I heard what happened in the Vault of the Warrant. Luckily my hair can't get any grayer. Why did you have to chase off the demons alone? Fankaloon, you're still alive! Well said, brother. We have bigger concerns. Let's go. Star Eye has much to answer for. Never mind. That is Jared's response after Mayev is amazed that he came for her after she tried to kill Malfurion and the Highborn. Again, I hope that they're really going to deal with the backstory and give it a proper explanation. This bastard leads the guards in this prison. He must pay for his crimes. Do you have to do the name calling? That's not nice. Lord Ravencrest's army will purge this land of all you invaders, but you will get no further than me. How dare you attack Keldry Noble? You will beg for mercy, which I will not give. Begging's never been one of my talents, Star Eye. You should know that by now. It's useless, brother. Like the other undead, he cannot see us for who we are. Lord Ravencrest cannot be stopped. We will prevail. What a tragic waste. Even in death, he only wanted to protect our people. Over here! This sewer will take us back outside. We should go before our enemies regroup. And with rescuing Mayev, we complete the story within the zone. Similar to Malfurion's story arc, this one leads into a dungeon. In this case, Blackrook Hold. We're going to go in and we're going to take care of the evil left behind by Gul'dan and the Legion. Unfortunately, there is no follow-up quest given yet, so there could be more story implemented later. For now, we just go in and we take care of the Amalgam of Souls. This is Ravencrest's ancestors fused into one being, we kick the crap out of it, we uh, kick some sense into them, and they realize that we're not the enemy. The second boss is Ilisana Ravencrest, daughter of Lord Ravencrest, and she's a demon hunter. The Dungeon Journal says that she was imprisoned for millennia in the Vault of the Wardens, shortly after the War of the Ancients. She found herself free after Mayev released the demon hunters from their prison. Returning to her ancestral home, she has sacrificed everything, including her very soul, to defend what she could not during the War of the Ancients. Now this sounded really interesting to me, right? Another demon hunter in a time period where only Illidan was mentioned as one, but I think that they messed up the description in the dungeon journal, since Illisana Ravencrest is part of the Demon Hunter introduction area. She is part of the Demon Hunters that she party with on the planet of Mardoom, which means that she is one of the Demon Hunters sent out by Illidan. 
After the Demon Hunter starting area, she is apparently imprisoned within the Vault of the Wardens, just like the player bases. So during Legion, Maiev shows up, she liberates all of them, they need their help against the Legion, and now she is returned to her ancestral home. Some way, somehow, she is now working for the Legion, or at least she's fighting against us, and we have to take her down. Next is Smash Pite the Hateful, a brutal imposing Moark lieutenant who led the Legion invasion of Blackrook Hold and commanded defense of the keep from the air with his colony of Felbets. The final boss is Lord Kurtalas Ravencrest, together with Latosius. Now, Latosius was actually described within the War of the Ancients trilogy. He was the one who interrogated Malfurion and led their mages for a little bit against the Legion, until he was killed by an Eredar warlock and Illidan stepped in. Now during the battle, we try to smack some sense into Ravencrest to make him realize that we're not the enemy, and Latosius reveals himself to be a dreadlord. With the aid of Ravencrest ancestors, we take care of Dante Leonax and we put the spirits to rest. That's the end of the storyline for now, but there are still a fair few gaps that need to be filled in. For example, why is Maiev leading the Wardens again? The events of Wolfhart have been acknowledged by Jared, so what has changed in the meantime? Why did Gul'dan take Illidan's body? They said that Gul'dan was ordered to do this by the Legion, but for what reason? Why did they take it to Blackrock Hold, and why did they separate his soul from his body? Did they have to make room for some other being to inhabit the body, or is something else going on here? Hopefully, time will tell. Alpha will be Alpha, there's still plenty of things that need to be implemented. For now, I'm going to end the video. Thank you very much for watching everyone, feel free to leave your speculation in the comments down below subscribe if you like my videos leave a like if you enjoyed this one and until next time guys see ya even in death Illidan's body can be used by the burning legion Gul'dan cannot succeed until next time at last I meet the great betrayer so he is the key to Azeroth's downfall the body is cold, but his soul is not done fighting. We Hurry have work. Then. The wardens are coming with the Illidari in tow. They are desperate. Huh. Poof. And they're gone. <coughs> what is Cordana doing Cordana! there? Cordana! You will answer to the High Council for this! Judge me all you like, sister. But you cannot stop us. You're too late, Warden. This vault will be your tomb. Demon Hunters, you have to survive. Find the one Illidan they... is still my charge! Illidan and my F, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First comes imprisonment, then comes torture. Something, something. Demon babies. What is your report? Memento storm rage. <gasps> you had a memento storm rage in your cage. Illidanmayev confirmed. <laughs> 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 I swear to fuck that my shipping is gonna work. I swear to fuck it's gonna work.